Okay guys, so uh, now we're gonna check out how this thing really works. So you were telling me earlier, I thought this was just a, a stick like you have in an airplane, but what is this called? This is for called the cyclic, which is the cylindrical control of the aircraft. So unlike uh, an airplane, uh, it does have forward and neutral, but it also has reverse and right turn and left turn. Awesome. So cylindrically, you can control the aircraft by this control here. Okay, great. Now, uh, so that's one, this control is mainly, I guess, forward, backwards uh, movement. And then what's that over there? Because I saw you grabbing that too earlier. This is active. Okay. So you're collectively going up or collectively going down. Going down. And then this is the throttle for the engine itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's attached to that. Now, uh, down here, uh, I, I called this earlier the rudder pedals, but it's clearly called something else. Uh, well, it's very uh, yeah, it's very similar to the rudder pedals. It is okay. yaw control, but it is more of an anti-torque device than a helicopter. But the effect is still the same. As okay. Far as yaw control goes. Okay. And in this particular uh, model, uh, you mentioned this is a customer's airplane already. It's finished, uh, built. Uh, can you tell me what we have here in the panel? Well, this panel here is the MGL Enigma panel, which is an EFIS panel. Okay. Uh, it monitors all the engine and flight controls, as it also has a flying map in it with GPS as well. Okay. So, aside from this, the only other instruments that you would need uh, would basically be a VHF radio and a transponder. So okay. between these three controls, you have pretty much everything you would ever need. So okay. basically, once you get in the aircraft, you power up the master switch, okay. you power up the panel, then we're going to power up the breakers that we're going to need, which would be the starter, the main fuel, and the igniter. Those okay. are going to be powered. Now those are controlled by switches here on the cyclic. Okay. Now the next one we would need to start it would be this bottom one here, which is fuel boost. And you can hear it come on. Okay. But we'll turn that off for the rest of this. Right. That would be on. Okay. okay. Then you would come to your throttle and you would give the it full throttle till it hits the stop. And then oh. you would back it off about a quarter of a turn. Okay, that's where you're gonna start at. So okay. to start it then, the stop button is the starter. So you push that and you hold that until you get the engine, which is this tack here's the engine this is the rotor so we're, ma we're basically monitoring the engine rpms and the engine egt exhaust gas temperature right here on startup okay so that we're going to take this up to about 15 to 17 percent and then on our control we're going to hit this small button with our little finger nice. over on this side okay. and what that oh, is going to do is it's going to start it's going to turn on the start fuel and the igniter so the fire gets started in the combustion can. Okay. Once that's established, then we're going to come down here, open our guarded switch, and we're going to turn on our main fuel. Okay. Once that comes, you'll be roughly at 50% at that point. So then you're going to come back to your throttle, slowly advance the throttle, watching our EGT temperatures not to exceed 1,000 degrees. You can control that temperature by how fast or how slow you add fuel to it with your throttle. Once you have progressed to 75% on the engine, then you would turn off the igniter and the start fuel. So then at that point, the engine's running 100% off of the main fuel system. You can throttle on up to 100%. Once you lock the throttle in, the governor takes over from there. So you no longer have to do any throttling until you're ready to shut the aircraft down. Wow, awesome. <laughs> that seems like a lot. Thank you so much.